to teach our living daughter her ways we live. We were working on that vision, long shadow she came in. She said, I bring remembering. Mm. The past is what I bring. She will have the memories. She will know the rhyme of women who work magic of a woman's time. I bring the Gorgon, I bring the mast and the moon, I bring them in a story now, I bring them in a tune. We were That's spinning fun. in a circle, we were deciding what to give, to teach our living daughter. All the ways we live, walking on that vision, howling mountain in she came. She said, I bring gifts to her. I bring passion, I bring flame. She will look forward. She will remember this time She will come full circle now She'll come for rhyme Women loving women The magic of our lives The circles of our passion Belong to her tonight to give to teach our living daughter all the ways we live walking on that vision hands on rainbow came by she said I'll take her dancing tonight she should learn how we fly Put one arm around my neck Put one hand on my breast Here we go, do you remember? Move your shoulders slow Now take the air in around Take it round and round your center Dancing in the sky You can remember we know how to fly Remember dancing in the sky You can remember we know how to fly Remember dancing in the sky We were sitting in a circle Deciding what to give To teach our living daughter All the ways we live I want to see it again <laughs> That was so beautiful. Rose, you're muted. Okay, now, that was Linda Shear's Howling Mountain, and we thank her so much for uh, allowing us to use that with those Land Dyke slides. And welcome to the, this panel about women's land communities. I'm Rose Norman, and my co-moderator is Janet Holstein. 
We're so glad to have you here today and so excited about today's discussion with nine land dykes, lesbians living on women's land. This is a follow-up to the November panel we did about the women's land movement that has created 150 or more women's intentional communities around the world, mostly started by lesbians on rural lands. Our focus today will be the women's lands that are welcoming visitors or new residents in the United States and Canada. I'll be moderating the panel discussion and Janet Holstein will handle the Q&A session planned to start at the top of the hour. You can put your questions in the chat throughout the presentation and we've already received some questions in advance. The slideshow that you saw at the beginning includes most of the women's lands that you'll hear about today. Uh, we posted the lyrics of Linda Shear's song in the chat. The, um, the simultaneous translation doesn't do a very good job of that. And we will run the slideshow again after the question and answer with Country Dyke songs by Jay Haggard. Uh, we've also compiled a women's land contact list to supplement the women's resource guide, women's land resource guide that's already posted on the OLOC website with the recording of the November panel. The contact list that we're adding provides information about over 40 women's land groups who welcome visitors and or new residents. These land groups are in 17 states and Puerto Rico, as well as two Canadian provinces. And we've also included some information about women's lands in Australia, New Zealand, Scotland, and Wales. The contact information for all of our panelists land groups is in this contact list, which will be posted at the OLOC website, along with the recording of this session today, probably next week. That's OLOC.org. If you're interested in visiting any of these women's lands on the contact list or, the, or that are described today, be sure to get in touch with them ahead of time to see what their COVID protocols are. Some people are putting off events and gatherings until 2023 and don't really want visitors right now. Today's panelists have broad experience with their own and other women's land groups. I'm going to introduce the panel first and then Pelican Lee will give an overview of the women's land movement. After that, each panelist will have about five minutes to tell you about her own land group and others she knows about. During the presentation, Janet will be collecting your questions in the chat again. So I'm going to introduce the panelists uh, geographically from east to west. That starts us in Nova Scotia with Tree Child. She's with Honor the Earth Women's Land Group on Turtle Song Land, Upper Branch, Nova Scotia, Canada. Blanche Jackson, I'm not sure Blanche has gotten here yet. She was having some technical problems. She co-founded Mott Dom Pym, Women of Color Land near Appomattox, Virginia. Barbara Lou co-founded Alapine on the Northeast Alabama, uh, Georgia border. Uh, Barbara and others ran the Pagoda in Florida for many years and they are now living in Alapine. In Arkansas, Nancy Vaughn and Diana Rivers are at the Ozark Land Holding Association known as OLA. Uh, Diana co-founded OLA. Jay Haggard co-founded Outland outside Serafina, New Mexico. Jay is editor of Maze, a lesbian country magazine, which has been keeping up with Land Dykes since 1983, and they publish a directory of women's lands. Pelican Lee is now at our women's land near Santa Fe, New Mexico, and has also written about Oregon lands in her book, Owl Farm Stories. Beth Root Gwynn co-founded Fly Away Home in Oregon. You will notice that Oregon has more land groups than any other state. Musawa co-founded We Moon Land, celebrating 50 years as an intentional women's community in 2023. Yeah. Musawa now divides her time between We Moon Land near Portland, Oregon and ARF Women's Land near Santa Fe, New Mexico. Now I'd like to turn it over to Pelican Lee for an introduction to the women's land movement. So women's lands started in the 1970s 
Um, and we called them women's lands instead of lesbian lands because we were wanting to welcome straight women because straight women would come and sooner or later they would come out. <laughs> so it was a way, it was, it was part of our um, lesbian recruitment. Um, some of us were inspired by the hippie counterculture back to the land communes. Um, but we didn't want to go there because we knew there would be sexism. So we wanted to start our own. Um, some of us were inspired by women's festivals as um, the first time that they were in all women environments and saw how powerful and rich that was and wanted to live that way all the time. Um, some of us wanted to get away from patriarchy as much as possible. Um, rather than trying to figure out how to live within patriarchy, we wanted to create alternative ways of living. Some of us were separatists and wanted to live lives as much as possible with um, other women and put women first in our lives and liberate ourselves from the male oppressor in any way we could and um, enjoy the safety of being with women and lesbians only. Um, and we wanted to join with each other to find out who we could be away from men and what we could do together as feminists and experience the collective strength of women relying on ourselves together. We wanted to live on land because we wanted to live naturally, wild and undomesticated. We stopped shaving our legs. We threw away our high heels if we had any to start with. Uh, we didn't wear bras unless it was necessary. We wanted to get back to our pre-patriarchal roots. And we wanted to live with Mother Earth. Um, and we identified with Mother Earth as being female, just as we were, and subject to being abused and raped by men. And we wanted to live lightly in partnership with Mother Earth and in sympathy with Mother Earth. The, so the lesbian lands, they're all different. They're organized in many different ways. They function in many different ways. There are different belief systems, different goals, different visions, different politics. Um, I'm putting myself out there saying we're all feminist in some form or other. Um, we have different agreements and rules. Some have rules, some don't like to, the word rules, say we have agreements, some have none at all. Um, and there's different issues. Um, when we first started out, some of our issues were around boy children and eating meat and pets and animals. Nowadays, our issues are different than that, but there's still different issues at different places. Um, and there's different ownership arrangements and different ways of financing um, the land and people's lives on the land. Some of them are farming and gardening and some don't. Um, some lesbian lands have only one or two women, sometimes hoping for more to come and create more of a community, and sometimes not hoping for anybody more to come. Um, and some have nobody living on them and are a refuge for visiting. Some are groups, um, and where there are groups, there's many different forms of community and many different decision-making processes. And what I've seen about women's lands over the years is that um, things happen in a cyclic way, just like all of nature. There can be hard times and things can get better and there can be good times and fun times and it's, it's cyclic, just like life. So that's it. Thank you, Thank you. Pelican. Thank you. That was an excellent overview, overview. I really appreciate your doing that. There is a lot of diversity, not necessarily ethnic diversity, but of every other kind of diversity in the women's land, lands that I know about. Okay, that's what it sounds like if you run out of time, and she did not, because she's a very good timer. <laughs> I'm the timer, and I'm really lousy at this. Um, 
But it's time to hear from the rest of our panelists, and we'll come back to Pelican while she talk about her particular land. But we're, we're going east to west, and we're starting with Tree Child in Nova Scotia. Take it away, Tree Child. Okay. Well, I'm feeling a little bit famous right now. From a time when I was in my 20s and first heard about OLAC, I aspired to be an OLAC member, and I finally got old enough to do that. And I hope the video will cooperate. It looks like it's not. Um, I'd like to start by honoring the four directions and acknowledging that I live on the unceded Mi'kmaq territory in Nova Scotia. And our land group is eco-feminist, committed to earth-centered women's spirituality and healing, and recognizing that we are an integral part of the ecosystems in which we live. Therefore, we commit to living simply on the earth and not using chemical products or conventional um, products of any kind. And um, I visited my first women's lands in the early 80s, 1982, and I was inspired to start land myself um, after being homeless and finding refuge on women's lands in the 90s. Um, so I started the group uh, Accessibility Alternatives, and we got 72 acres in Wendell, Massachusetts, which um, now has 69 acres in Forever Wild Conservation and three uh, lots that are owned by lesbians today. Um, in 2006, a tornado uprooted me from that land and I landed in Nova Scotia. And that's another story um, where we started Honor the Earth Women's Land Community and it's a sister organization to Accessibility Alternatives. So collectively we run a women's needs fund to help women that need help with supplements or health care and things. Um, we had two prior locations in Nova Scotia that didn't work out for various reasons. And I'm really sorry about the video, but I live in a rural area, what can I say? Um, and the, the land that we just got in September, we called Turtle Song. And it's 87 acres in Upper Branch, Nova Scotia, which is on the South Shore outside of Bridgewater. And we're planning to put 70 or 80 acres into environmental covenants. Um, there's communal lake access and a mature mixed forest and an extensive wetland ecosystem that we're looking forward to protecting. Um, by getting this land, we kept it out of the hands of developers that it was marketed to. Um, that you can canoe and kayak all over the lake. Um, there's three large islands that are owned by the government of Canada with old growth forests on them that are beautiful for camping and exploring. Um, the land has magical standing stones aligned with the four directions and solstice, sunrise, and, e and sunset. They're still being located and explored. Um, I've been getting some training around looking for those signs. Um, the rocks in the forest, there are um, three different ways to participate in Turtle Song. You can buy your own lot, which will be part of a neighborhood association and will help us to form the environmental covenants and share them with the greater part of the land. We actually do need to subdivide in order to create environmental restrictions here in Nova Scotia. That's the best way to do that. And we also are in need of support because we did borrow a substantial amount of money from the bank to be able to get this land. So if anyone wants to get a summer home or you know, cottage place or a campsite, um, that's a good opportunity for that. The lots will vary depending on what size you choose. We have not actually um, subdivided yet, although we did put the um, septic test through and we're good with that. 
Um, but the, the price range would be twenty five to thirty thousand and less somebody wanted a larger acreage. Um, and that's Canadian. So it's a lot less in American dollars. Um, you can also move on to the land and any permanent structures that you build would remain with the land. Although you could have a 99 year lease agreement to live out your life on the land. Um, you can visit and camp out. The lakefront has a beautiful camping site and there's two other sites that we're considering developing into campsites as well as tons of wilderness camping. Um, there's also a mile of frontage on the uh, dirt road, Heron Road, which is a private road and uh, goes through part of the land and continues into the land with electricity and internet potential. Um, there's an area where we did the septic test that has like a private driveway off of the road that could be shared by three or four homes um, and has easier access to town if um, people needed that. That's so, your time. That's your time, perfect. Trudell. <laughs> I was just going to say, so that's about it. <laughs> oh, I'm uh, sorry. I, I'm sorry. I beat you to it. <laughs> and I see great, that Blanche perfect. has come into the room. Blanche Jackson. Oh, right in Virginia. Take it away, Blanche. Un unmute. Okay. Got it. All right. <laughs> Okay, it's a little less than three acres. It's at the moment semi-private and not, but um, not remote. It's, it's easy to get to. It has it, good solid areas for parking. I am in the process of planting trees around the perimeter in certain places where it's needed for privacy. And at some point I would like to get trailers, I have decided that due, uh, due to the uncertainty of our times, it's a good idea to have everything on wheels. I'm not building sheds. I want to get trailers <laughs> uh, for storage. And at, at, at the uh, part one would be women who are traveling more or less self-contained. I can get them good water. I can get them um, a bathroom with a shower and a flush toilet and a sink and all of that stuff. But um, in the long run, I would like to get small trailers also so that um, women who are traveling together would like their own space for a while. I'm thinking most, oh, the other thing is that we're approximately three miles southwest of DC. And um, a lot of women seem to have a reason to want to go to DC. First two nights would be free. Uh, and after that, one would ha either have to pitch in and do something or um, contribute financially. Donations always accepted. And any questions? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to hold questions until until the end. Why don't you oh. have, a, you have a minute or so here? Why don't you say something about how Mont, Mont Dampin started the women of the one big women of color tent oh by the way while i was stumbling around trying to find how to get in i did see the quest the pre-questions and one question was are white women invented uh are welcome and yes euro descended women are very welcome and girl <laughs> children are welcome and if there's nobody already here who objects boys under 10 uh, 10 and under are welcome when we get going but there's a lot of work to do uh, how how Matam Tim got started? Orig originally, we got uh, 136 acres, and the irony of it all is just the way that the Michigan land is working now. That's exactly what we had in mind. Different groups of women organized and produced their own things on the land. That's what we wanted to happen. It didn't happen, uh, 
and it didn't happen. <laughs> so we sold it and bought uh, this slightly less than three acres, which is manageable, which I can do a lot of things myself, it just takes longer. Somebody had a question, you might as well go ahead and answer about the name, Mott Dompim, and it's spelled wrong in your, um, it, it's D-O-M-P-I-M, -M, right? Yes, the last letter is M. Everybody wants to make it an N. I'll uh, fix it. <laughs> what does it mean? Yeah, my Maat is the Egyptian goddess of things like truth, balance, and justice. Dumpim, I found this little ugly book and it kept drawing my attention. And according to that book, Dumpim means um, people who return to their place of origin. Oh, oh I know. <laughs> And, and you're do I have another business. minute? Yes, go oh. ahead. Okay, um, we were doing one of the East Coast festivals, and in their eternal wisdom, they they uh, they put the uh, two only two women of color doing workshops at the same time. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> we combined them, and it just happens that her workshop was about uh, people re people returning home. So mm -hmm. she did the ceremony. Uh, the, the home was Madam Pim, <laughs> and we worked it out. Wow, synchronicity! That's great. Yes, and and you're re you're open for business now. You can somebody could contact you now and say, "Can I come?" Yes, it's not going to be the way I described yet, but there is parking, and I can make that bathroom inside the single wide available. I live in the single wide. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, and thank you for going to, I know it was quite a challenge. You've had some technical challenges lately. I appreciate well, you I don't, working I, yeah, I don't know what happened. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> that's, that's trying to, uh, uh, Mercury. Okay. All right. We're going to move on to Alabama now with Barbara Lou. <laughs> Hi. I'm Barbara Lou. Bye. Um, by Blanche, by Tree Child. Thank you both. Great, great. And for do all the honoring that you're doing and real, it's hard work. Believe me, I know. I've been at this for 45 years, so I know what hard work it is. Okay, so uh, I'm Barbara Lou, and uh, I am here to talk about Alpine Village, which is, which is located in Northeast Alabama, about a mile from the Georgia line. And uh, it is in the middle of the ABC triangle, and that means Atlanta, Birmingham, Chattanooga. And I do have some photographs that um, will be coming up. Um, somebody else is controlling the computer and I still see Blanche. I don't know if anybody's seeing uh, my photographs. Um, we're located on Lookout Mountain in the woods at an elevation of 1600 feet. And um, we have a hundred acres that consists of 45 two acre lots. Currently we have 27 lesbians here, uh, five are part-timers. And lesbians here live in everything from a travel trailer, single wide manufactured home, double wides, traditional stick built houses, uh, a roundhouse and an underground house. Um, we are not a collective or a land trust. Each woman gets a deed to her lot from Sheba Mountain Properties. Sheba Mountain Properties is a corporation that three of us formed to develop the 100 acres and to sell the 45 lots. Uh, we three who started Sheba were involved at the Pagoda, a lesbian community in St. Augustine, Florida, from 1977 to 1997 when Alpine began. So in June, Alpine will be, we will have been at Alpine for 25 years. So we have about 45 years experience with lesbian community. Uh, we have four seasons on the mountain and at Alpine, we have about a mile and a half of roads to maintain. Uh, we do get a road fee from each lot and currently the road fee is $180 per year. And that allows us to maintain the roads that we have. Uh, 
we have about a mile and a half of roads. There is water and electric service available in Alpine. Uh, because we're not a collective, there's no meetings, there's no decision making, there's no voting. However, some of the residents here formed Alpine Community Association, which is a 501c3 nonprofit, and they do meet regularly. Uh, they maintain a building and women can come and stay in that building, rent a room and stay overnight. Uh, you don't have to join ACA, but you can if you want. Um, so no resident has to join and they just make decisions for their lot, not for the whole community. Currently we have 19 singles and four couples are involved at Alpine. Now during COVID, uh, different from everybody else, we have a spurt of growth and we have 12 new residents in the last year. They had to struggle with the increased expense of materials and the availability of materials and uh, workers. So for now, although you can visit and you can stay overnight in the ACA building, I'm not selling lots at the moment, but we are taking a waiting list because we're gonna have 12 lots come available as soon as we catch our breath. Uh, this past year, uh, we had a memorial service for five either current or former residents that we lost this year. So we're just, we're dealing with uh, construction issues and we're dealing with uh, uh, a little bit of sadness here that we have, but we have some new younger members and we're very happy about that. Um, you can Google Alpine and uh, we have a sales website and ACA has a site that you can go to if you wanna see about getting a reservation here uh, and they are alpine.org. Our name comes from Alabama Pines. So if you Google us, it's Alpine, not Alpine, Alpine. Now, if you have a group that's interested in starting with completely raw land with no utility infrastructure, we also have another couple hundred acres nearby that um, we can sell to you. Um, you could develop and um, we're open to anybody. Uh, contact us and we'll try to help in any way we can. Okay, I'm done. Great. You came in two seconds away from the five minute Marco. Wonderful. So sorry, I thought I was supposed to be three minutes and 30 seconds, but I went over. <laughs> Next time, that's what I'll tell people. I should get five minutes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, coming up next in Arkansas, we have Diana Rivers and Nancy Vaughn at Ola. Hello. Uh, I'm Nancy, and this is Diana. And Diana started our land. We live at Ola, Ozark Land Holding Association, and we're in the northwest corner of Arkansas and one of the prettier parts. We're a little bit of a, a blue spot in a red state. And uh, Fayetteville is our nearest big town, although our actual uh, uh, address is Elkins. Um, we're 25 miles from, from Fayetteville, which is a 40, 40 or 45 minute drive. Um, we have currently 16 active members and uh, we have a limit of 20 members on our land, which is about 240 acres with some other attached areas that will not be developed. And um, so we have a, a limit of 20 members. So there are possibilities of four more memberships available. Um, we've had, we last year was a hard year for us with the COVID and some membership issues. And so we have done some serious, uh, uh, wonderful work with our membership process. And uh, so we think the membership process is gonna be easier from this point on. The membership process is um, approximately a year long, just in, in order for us to get to know each other, to see if it's a fit for, a, for us all. And um, so, <clears throat> um, um, I also, you know, my, my partner died uh, after 24 wonderful years. She died in 2013. And so I decided that I don't need my big two-story house anymore. So I did put my house on the lesbian market, but everything got shut down, of course, because of COVID. But if, uh, if anyone is interested in contacting our land, and we do encourage visitors, you know, normally, uh, we're, you know, we have to go as, as COVID 
is rearing its ugly head again over and over. Uh, we have to say yes or no right now, but um, we do encourage visitors and we do have on our contact, we have my phone number, Diana's phone number and our email address. So uh, contact us and you're welcome to come visit. Uh, there's another land in nearby that's uh, called Cedar Hill and it's owned by Jeannie Neath and Paula Marie Daughter and they also accept visitors, lesbian, women born women visitors to their land and they're also on the contact list. Uh, so Diana needs to have a, a turn. She's the one of our founders. She's the one who found this beautiful land. And so anyway, Diana, it's your turn. Well, I wanna say a little bit about the land because it's so varied and beautiful. There's a steep mountaintop or mountain slope with lots of trees. There are big long pastures, open land. There's uh, an orchard that we have started planting, which is also our graveyard. And we have two dear friends already buried there. And at the end of that pasture is a cedar grove, which we have used for rituals. Cedar grove with a nice big fire pit that we've used for sacred space, for celebrating equinoxes and solstices and the days between. And then the land slopes down, steeply wooded land, and ends up in a wet weather creek with a swimming hole and humongous big rocks that are quite amazing. It's like being in a park. You can hardly believe this is private land. But anyway, that's I wanted to say that about the land and across the creek. Well, the creek itself, or part of the creek, is a sanctuary. Nobody can build down there. And it's shared with a semi-community across the way that we call Cross Creek, where there are several lesbians living and also straight folks. But it's like another community, but doesn't have a community structure. But it's like a sister community. And we share that uh, sanctuary along the creek. And we also have another piece of sanctuary land back in the forest called Ledge Creek that several of us brought up and share. So, um, and we operate under consensus minus one policy and our membership meetings with COVID challenged our policy and everything about us. <laughs> Trying to meet when you can't meet is very hard. We all are meeting on Zoom, but it's not really a good format that for, was for intimate meetings. Too difficult. But hoping that this plague will pass like others have and that we can resume a more open and welcoming policy again. We do love to have women come visit here. Okay, this is it. Right. Thank that you, is. Diane yeah, and, and Nancy. Thank you. You're welcome. Now we're moving to New Mexico with Jay Haggard at Outland. Uh, unmute. Whoops. Okay, I'm Jay. I'm a co-founder at Outland and the editor of Maze. Um, we've been here 33 years and we're a thousand marvelous high desert acres surrounded by national forest and two miles from the nearest neighbor. We're a state nonprofit established to preserve the land and also to preserve the land as a home for lesbians. We sponsor and house the New Mexico Women's Retreat, Maze Magazine, and a range of women, earth, and spirit projects. We are lesbians who welcome lesbians and other women born women, female women. The land, oh my gosh, the land is just incredible. Um, it's expansive. There is a life force 
in everything here. It's a life force that not only is present, but it's reaching out to us for connection. The entire land draws us into connection with ourselves, each other, the earth, and spirit. In connection, anything is possible. Creativity, healing, relations um, can flow, possibilities can unfold. In a disconnected society, connection is transforming and revolutionary. We strive to live life as women would imagine life can be, based on our values. Yep, revolutionary. Women are here as guests, as outland caretakers, and as residents. to come for weeks, months, or years to experience land life and lesbian community, to do the tasks of the land, to unfold community together, to celebrate lesbian culture and each other. There are anywhere from three to eight of us here at any given time with a spectrum of ages, cultures, and abilities. And we've had the last two, three years, a lot of young women, young lesbians in their early 20s. We welcome women as guests, as outland caretakers, and as potential residents. And welcome you to experience what it means to live on land, what needs to be done, to learn the skills and the tool use and, and everything to be self-sufficient on land, to develop um, relationship and communication skills. Not a lot of steep learning curves on land. We are here to unfold a connected and fun, nourishing life and do it all together. We have eight sweet woman-built adobe casitas available and camping is possible. Part of what's so precious about Outland for me is the tone. We celebrate ourselves and each other. When any, and you or I walk into a room, we want everyone to stop and say, oh, wow, hooray, you're here. You know, just that appreciation. We encourage each other to expand into our biggest, most authentic selves, to, to be real. Um, being real is maybe one of the most difficult things we do in this society. Back to connection. In a disconnected world, what we're doing on women's lands is world changing and world creating. We are a life culture. We create profound change working on the physical and the energetic levels. With all of our best energy going into unfolding possibilities for ourselves, each other, and creating that world we know is possible. We welcome you uh, to experience land life and lesbian community. Whoever is here is our community, plus so many others who are here psychically and energetically and who come physically as often as they can. We invite you to share this remarkable land with us to help create and experience life as women know it can be. Come live your values, live your dreams, celebrate yourself, other women, celebrate life. Come help create and maintain this amazing space. Contact me, jhaggard at gmail.com. I'd love to talk with you. Come when you can. Come as a guest, come as an outlook caretaker, or come to assist me uh, personally since I've been having health challenges the last couple of years. We would love to share this remarkable land with you, to share this life with you. I hope you come, I hope you contact me. Come be outlandish. Thank you, Jay. You certainly do make that sound outlandish and wonderful. Thank you so much. Also in New Mexico, um, Pe Pelican Lee will speak about it, uh, ARF Women's Land. So ARF is in northern New Mexico on the ancestral lands of uh, Tusuki Pueblo. And it is unique because it is very close to town, 20 minutes to Santa Fe. So it makes it easy for women to live there and, and have jobs in town. And also it um, makes it easy for lesbians in Santa Fe to get to ARF and easy for circles, potlucks, events, work parties. And we have a wider community of town lesbians who come for many things. 
The, um, the hard thing about ARF is that it's pretty rugged. It's in the foothills of the Sangar de Cristo Mountains. And um, it's steep, a steep driveway to get into the land that requires either four wheel drive or all wheel drive. But also you can walk down this hill and I do that all the time. It's about maybe a city block long and keeps me in shape. <laughs> um, you can't drive to most of the houses once you get to the bottom of the hill. And um, there's a mile and a half of dirt road before you get to our driveway that sometimes becomes impassable right after snowstorms, but um, there's a place to park and walk in maybe a half a mile. And many of us have done that many times. Um, and there's a creek at the bottom um, with the steep hillsides on either side. And because we've had 20 years of drought, the creek that used to be year round is not always year round, hardly ever anymore. But um, because it's there, we have um, unique vegetation that is on the valley floors in New Mexico, which includes cottonwoods, oaks, willows, um, pine, ponderosa pine, many bushes and wildflowers. And then our hillsides our typical high desert pinion and juniper woodland, which you saw on Jay's screen. It's 25 acres owned as a land trust, which is a not-for-profit um, that has 501c3 status, and the land is all paid for. It's completely off the grid, and most of the houses have solar electricity. There's um, 12 cabins, tiny houses, adobe houses, most of them are on the hillsides and all of them are women built. Each house has a pretty long history of various women who've lived there over the years. And um, often when women move into a house, they'll improve it and do a little remodeling and make it better. We have a main house um, for meetings, parties, events, and as a resource. And somebody lives in the main house um, to keep it up and with the agreement that it gets used for all those other things. Um, we recently had a well dug and anticipate new possibilities, including a bathhouse that we're starting to talk about and figure out what, how we wanna do that. Um, most of the houses have cisterns for rainwater collection, which is what we've been using for over 40 years. There's some cell phone coverage on the land and some internet. ARF was established in 1977, and many, many lesbians have lived at ARF over the years, and many have more have come to enjoy the land and camp there. Currently, we have 12 members with three more in our membership process to become members. Uh, since Barbara mentioned about Alpine, we have three couples. Everybody else is single. Our ages range from 55 to 82. Um, we raised children at ARF in the 1980s, both boys and girls, and we found out that the boys, after at, when they got to be a certain age, they didn't want to live on women's land anymore. We never had a policy about it. Um, we make our decisions by consensus. We have meetings more or less monthly, maybe more in summer, um, less in the winter, there, except we're now we're doing Zoom like everybody else. Um, there's fewer women on the land in the winter because it's at 7,500 feet, lots of snow, pretty darn cold. Um, and so some women go other places for the winter. Some of us have townhouses in the, um, that we stay at more often in the winter. Um, what various ones of us do for jobs, landscaping, carpentry, massage, acupuncture, house cleaning, cooking, teaching meditation, and we've had teachers all the way from the elementary school level to university level. And our elders are mostly retired. Living this lifestyle gives us the freedom to work less uh, than most people because our financial needs are not as great. It takes more work, but it's less money. Uh, we value living simply in touch with nature and the elements. And we welcome visitors, but some of us are especially vulnerable to COVID right now. So we're asking all our visitors to be vaccinated and boosted if they're eligible for that. Um, there's many beautiful sites for tent camping on the land, as well as a rustic guest cabin. That's all. Thank you. <laughs> Great job. 
and you've done double duty here. So next up is Beth Root Gwynn, who will be talking about two Oregon lands. Unmute. There. There. Okay. I just unmuted. And hi, I'm Beth Root. I live at Flyaway Home, founded as Lesbian Land in Southern Oregon in 1976. Two of us, let's see, I've already, I've already unmuted, right? You are. Did you hear those introductory comments? I already had unmuted, but it sounds like I didn't maybe get on. I, I thought I heard, I thought it started when you, I, th I heard it. Okay, good, good. Um, because I know I have only so much time and there's lots to say. Um, two of us are the founders of Flyway Home, Hawk Madrone and myself. Four of us lived there in the early 80s and you know, sometimes you can't keep everybody down the farm. We've been making homes and gardens and lesbian culture on these 40 acres of steep forest land for 46 years. Flyway Home is a jewel of quiet beauty, deep woods, hard work. There are three buildings on the land. They're all round and mostly woman built. In the slideshow earlier, there was a picture of She Wings, which is my home built about 30 years ago. And over the course of two months, uh, two years, I'm sorry, on the, over the course of two years, approximately 70 women worked on building that building. It was quite a miracle. It's quite beautiful. And the small round building in the slideshow is the yurt. It's a little wooden yurt. It's our guest cabin. It's rustic and cozy. We welcome natal females to visit and enjoy it and drink deeply of the gifts of the land. Flyway Home itself is rustic. Off-grid, solar panels for lights and charging, no Wi-Fi. The cell is dicey sometimes. The communication companies keep promising improvements. We'll see. We have a composting system for Womanure. Water gravity flows to the land from a spring that uh, it's a one-inch plastic pipe, and the spring meanders. The spring water meanders about four thousand feet through the forest down to the land. Um, and recently, some younger angel friends are being flyway home water keepers, and they are taking care of the annual maintenance of the spring. A new tank supplies additional imported water that is coming to the drone's house. Flyway home is home to spiritual gatherings that women come to. We circle, usually up at she wings every solstice, every equinox, Palamas, and we sing our hearts out, praying for the earth and all her life forms, celebrating women. I see, I invoke Flyway Home Women's Temple, carrying on this sacred work on and on beyond the lifetimes of those of us who mother it now. Meantime, and while we're still kicking, impressively so, I must say. Yes, come visit. Move straw bales if you're up to it, stack firewood, write those poems, sketch that bird, laugh, sleep, discover, dream. Info and contact list about Flyway Home and about Owl Farm over Hill and Dale is Flyway Home's nearest woman land, women's land neighbor, Owl Farm. Also rustic, um, solar panels, no Wi-Fi, compost privies, dicey cell, and also founded in 1976. Owl Farm was founded by the newly incorporated Oregon Women's Land Trust in 1975 it's the first women's land trust anywhere that we can find out anything about. 
a nonprofit committed to preservation of land, access to land and land wisdom for women. I'm a longtime board member. Our farm is radiantly beautiful land, 147 acres with a wide sweep of meadows framed by forested ridges that reach high into the sky. Like Flyway Home, I said this already, it is in a remote location, off-grid, solar panels, etc. There is very good news from Al Farm. After a 15-year struggle, we and other environmentalists in Southern Oregon have stopped a major fracked gas LNG pipeline that would have impacted Al Farm big time. And I'm going to name Francis Etherington, who's president of uh, Oregon Women's Land Trust, as an environmentalist. And I tell you, the logging companies quake in their boots when her name is mentioned. She saved thousands of trees. Other good news. There are recent new energies and activities at Owl Farm. New women on the board, a vigorously active farm team, new work parties and workshops. Changes are ahead. The woman who has has been a longtime caregiver, caretaker at Owl Farm will likely be relocating in a few months. We will be creating new ways for women to be involved short term, long term, in helping care for this land and be part of her renaissance. At present, visitors are welcome only in warm weather months and only for camping. Infrastructure needs a lot of work. No buildings at present are suitable for overnights. Here's a parable. This late summer, the farm team installed a new pump on the old well dug in, 1890, uh, in 1981 <laughs> and not used for, I don't know, 15 years or so. Rusty, unsafe water was the story. New story. From its depths with the new pump, the well poured forth copious amounts of clear, clean water, uncontaminated, safe, and free. This land is waiting in her depths to love and be loved by women. So stay in touch, be in touch. And Oregon Women's Land Trust website, oregonwomenslandtrust.org, um, can help direct you toward other lands that accept visitors. They're listed in the contact um, directory, the national contact list. But sometimes we can help you figure out, you know, what might be the best fit for your camping trip or your checking out the possibilities of residency. So, welcome. Thank you, Beth Root. And our last panelist, Musawa, is at We Moonland, also in Oregon. Hi, I'm, we, I'm Musawa, um, and, and I co founded We Moonland in 19, uh, let's see, 73. And it is the oldest women's land that I know of. Um, we're going to celebrate our 50th anniversary next year. We hope lots of women will come and we'll have a, a like a week long, maybe camp out as a land dike camp out. And then a, um, the weekend with the general celebration of the women's land with a lot of local women as well. So um, the last time we did this was our 40th anniversary and it was really wonderful to have so many women from all over and actually to revive the Land Dyke um, gatherings that used to happen annually, I think for a period there. Now it seems to be more like every 10 years, at least on this land, that's what we're doing. So um, anyway, we are now going through a big transition. Well, first I wanna say thank you everybody who's presented. I, I love hearing from every single one, all our different lands. And so many have spoken so eloquently about what our values are and what we have to offer and how we live. So I'm not going to focus on that, but I just say we are an, a community. We're an extended women's land community um, all over this 
the state of Oregon for sure, but also um, <laughs> we have to, our puppy is making a lot of noise in the background. Um, anyway, we really are an extended women's land community and it's wonderful to have gatherings to get together with everybody. And we probably, we may, we University, which is one of our 501, it is our 501c3 that hasn't been doing too much lately, but um, we may be sponsoring more gatherings like this on different topics um, that, so if anybody is interested in We Moon Land or these offerings that we may or may not be giving, um, you can join our, you know, write, write us Gmail at wemoonland at gmail.com and just get on our mailing list. Um, so that's, and this is, that's the first step. If you want to come visit, email us. Um, and I, I wanted to say a little bit right now, Eagle, my partner, is standing, sitting next to me. And Zosha, our dog, is sitting next to her. And Nicole, who's our latest, greatest new resident, is, um, is over there. <laughs> and uh, Cherie isn't here right at the moment. But um, really, right now, we're down to four women, um, two part-time. Eagle and I share we Moon Land and ARF Women's Land. Eagles lived at ARF. How long have we been there? Uh, almost 31 years. Yeah, I, actually, I want maybe I wanted to actually part of this Women's Land is I loved all the descriptions of the land. Uh, also, it's great to, to see some of the women involved. And so I just wanted to actually in, invite in um, that you will see who you meet when you come visit us or what different ones are doing. But do you want to just say something about your experience on Women's Land? Uh, sure. I started going to Michigan Women's Music Festival when I was 18, and I was lucky enough to go for 36 um, of the 40 years. And that was very, um, it was a big education for me and um, I've been lucky enough, I'm 60, and for 34 years, I've been able to live on women's land, um, several different ones. I lived at Adobe Land and ARF and also here at We Moon Land, and I just feel really fortunate that um, starting at 18, I got, I got to see the value of women's only space, and I'm still valuing it um, every day and feel really lucky that we have a lot of these beautiful women's lands and that I get to live at our and also um, here at We Moon Land. And, and We Moon Land is 52 acres. Um, we have some of, uh, some of the land is wooded with old growth, dug fir and other fir trees. And then we have some open fields at the top. We have this community space, Oma, that's a two-story round home. And then we have other cabins and, um, and little outbuildings that women and a, we all visit, are allowed to visit. And we have a canvas yurt that's also a visitor space. And we're right about at five minutes. Oh yeah, my goodness. <laughs> so, um, well, if we're still going, can you just, Nicole is the one, if you email us to try to visit, she's, she's, well, why don't you say something you just quickly came from Brighton Bush that got burned out? Um, yeah, I was living at Brighton Bush Community for five and a half years. Um, it was a hot spring and uh, love, landed in this lovely land. And uh, if you do email, uh, I'll be communicating with you. And then also, if you give us a call, Cherie will be answering the the phone or, or I. So we'd love to see everyone. And um, with COVID, it's a little bit tricky right now. Um, so we do have some protocols and we can go over those. Um, and uh, yeah, that's kind of the basics. There's certainly a lot more to say, but I think our five minutes is up. Is that true? <laughs> yes, it is. Thank you. You did a great job. We've all done a great job. I'm so impressed. What what an amazing <laughs> stretch from three acres in Virginia to a thousand acres in New Mexico uh, to a 50 year old land. And I wanted to know, I'm going to have to leave before this is over. And I want to know when that we moon the 50 year celebration, what time of year it's going to be. It'll be it'll summer be in the summer. summer. It'll probably be probably summer solstice and twenty twenty three. 
Yeah, one thing I'm imagining is that might be a time to come from different parts of the country and visit women's lands. Maybe the time between summer solstice and the interdependence day um, mm -hmm. would be a time that other lands might be opening up in Oregon for to women to visit too. So in conjunction with coming for the big gathering um, on the 50th, which we don't have the date pinned down right now, but that's the time. Mm -hmm. that's the right. Summer. Summer. Good. Okay, uh, before I turn this over to Janet Hosting for the Q&A, um, I wanted to mention that we will run the slideshow again at the end with Jay Haggard's uh, Country Dyke songs. And I wondered, should we run um, Barbara's Ellen Pan's pictures now or, or wait until after the question and answer? There were supposed to be pictures of Alapine during Barbara's Liz talk and uh, something came up. I just took a call during the Wee Moon from Discovery Bay Resort, which we have, you wouldn't believe the trouble we went to to try to get contact information for Discovery Bay Resort in Washington State. They had to go before their board before they could be put in this contact list, but they have approved it. We will have contact information. It's primarily an RV, a women's RV park, sort of like the Superstition Mountain one in Arizona, which probably should be in this list, but I'm not sure why it's it's not, maybe Jay knows. Um, Deirdre, do you want to do you want to do Barbara's uh, pictures now or wait until after Q&A? I can run them now if you want. Um, Janet, what do you think? I think they should probably be run now. OK. okay. So Barbara, you want to talk as, as she's showing them? I can unmute myself. Look at that. I'll say a word or two as they go by. They, they uh, Deirdre said they'll be up for about eight seconds, so I'll try to fill the eight seconds and narrow. Actually, I sh after I messed it up, I shortened it in case okay. we did want to run it, so it'll go. It'll go more like it did, hopefully, earlier. Sorry about that. I had an unexpected and very important phone call that I'd had to take, so that just understand bollocked up my brain. <laughs> Here well, we go. And here we go. Yeah. So this is Alpine Village, which is on 100 acres. We have 45 two acre lots and women asked, um, are there any houses for sale? And there aren't. If a, if a lesbian uh, is not able to stay in her house, we usually have somebody on a waiting list for the house because we're still developing lots. It's raw land, although oh, we have- Okay, just a minute here. Hey, Barb, hold up a second. She's trying to get the slides up. Yeah, I'm just filling time. Yep. Okay. <laughs> questions that came up. Sorry um, about that. Just a minute here. I've got too much on my screen. So questions that came I'm up in the to... chat. So no, I don't have any houses at the moment. Um, and um, like I said before, we have a wide variety of things, uh, everything from travel trailers to an underground house. Um, but we do have uh you know, lots, which are, we have several new residents, as I mentioned, 12 new residents, and those lots are um, raw land that have to be developed, and the uh, water line runs past the lot, but you have to bring the water and the electric into your uh, lot and clear the trees and build a pad, you know, it, it's it's not easy. Um, somebody, I'll, I'll just answer some, here we go. So... Uh, <sighs> All right, so this is uh, at the north end of our land. It's a, it's a creek that got dammed up by the beavers. So we call it Beaver Pond. And that's a little reflection. That's one of our roads in the fall. And that's a, a resident um, who was one of our early residents who's no longer with us, taking a walk. She used to walk that mile and a half of roads that we have every day. Um, and we do have four seasons, as I said. Um, and you'll see some winter photographs as we go along. Um, we do road maintenance, and I mentioned, uh, now I'm going to repeat myself, I mentioned that the, and, uh, each lot pays $180 a year for uh, into the road maintenance fee. That's our plat. That shows our 45 lots and the roads that we have, and we inherited that. That's our entranceway where our mailboxes are. You can see we now have quite a few more. That's a half of a double wide coming in. Uh, that happens to be my double wide, which I bought used, and where we are uh, on a boundary, we have a fire break. Um, we got a, a fire break all the way around the property. Uh, we have we got a grant for directional signs. That's that road that she was taking a walk on there. It's uh, road maintenance going on, getting some rock laid out on the roads. 
Uh, that's a little pond we have in the middle of the property that wa was a creek at one time. Um, one of the houses in the winter time and uh, then that same house in the summer with the flowers growing. And there we are at a uh, solar eclipse. We're all looking up at the sun with our proper uh, glasses on and that's a gathering for a memorial that we did. Um, and that's Alpine Village. Thank you for running it, Deirdre. I really appreciate it. We are land women, we are land dyke women. Living with the land, we are land women, we have landed women, always doing all we can, dreaming can do candid women, hopeful, careless, wind-tanned women, giving, growing, wizened women, living hand in hand, living all we can. We are land women, we are land dyke women, living with the land. We are land women, we have landed women, live with dykes, birds, trees, and sand. Gardening, laughing, weaving women, farm community, lonely women, quiet talking, moving women, living hand in hand. Being all we can. We are land women, we are land dyke women. Living with the land, we are land women, we have landed women. In our diversity, we are grand. Wrinkled, playful, knowing women. Mourning, heartful, building women. Singing, working, opened women. Living hand in hand, being all we can. We're building a dyke life at Outland. We're making Outland our home. We come together. Grow together, live together in a lesbian way. Let's do what we can for our dyke world, building it as we grow. Let's do all we do with love in our hearts, do all we do with love from the start. Let's do all we do with care for ourselves and for each other. Let's get to the heart. Let's not wait to start. We are the web and we each play a part. Let's do all we do in connection. Our values define our direction. Let's get to the heart. Let's not wait to start. We are the web and we each play a part. Let's do all we do with intent. Focused on what we dream. Let's get to the heart. Let's not wait to start. We are the web and we each play a part. 